Hey guys, and welcome back. We've got a lot of great stuff planned for today's video. Let's take a quick sneak peek. In today's video, we're gonna start breaking down our John Deere 1219 hay mower and see if we can find out once and for all why these sickle bars keep breaking. We are also gonna take a look at another field that I prep to get planted. We're gonna do some work with the TYM. And of course, we are also in the cabin. We are working on the ceiling. Shh, you're not supposed to see that yet. So let's go. Right now the hay fields need a good three to four day pouring of rain to really get them to grow. Good news is I have just enough space <laughs> to get the door shut because when the sun is out, it hits right here on the store all day long and it gets really hot. So closing that door will keep it a lot cooler in here and in the barn in general. This is my fantastic collection of sickle bars. Right here we have one, two, three, four sickle bars. And as you can see, these have barely been used. Like this one, um, it's brand new. This one is probably was the original one that came with our sickle cutter because you can see it has the most wear on it. If I pull out the sickle bar right here, the spot that keeps breaking is right here on the end. This actually looks like one that had been previously welded. Um, I don't think this is the one that we had previously welded, but maybe it was. It seemed that year after year, cut after cut, the cutter bars were breaking at a much faster rate than the ones before them. I know a lot of you guys had mentioned about the wobble box and the used ones were going for $800 to $1,000, $1,000. And I don't know 100% that that is exactly the issue. Because to really get a good idea, I kind of need to take that apart. The more you take apart, the more likely something won't go back together correctly. So I don't want to touch something unless I know there's an issue. Lying back and forth. And here's another little bit of history. I actually never broke a sickle bar until we rented a hay field. And that hay field was the biggest disaster ever. It bit the dirt pretty good. It chewed right through a rut and right after that it broke. It had been running for two years, I think, before it broke on that field. And ever since then, we've had nothing but issues with it. Well, this is definitely a better scenario. Now if we can just have rain like this for the next four days, uh, we might have some hay to cut. What are you thinking? What's going on with your mouth? What is this? Oh, got something stuck to your face. What you got? You been eating grass? <laughs> oh, stinker. You are so dirty. Look how dirty you are. You gonna go play in the rain? Oh my goodness. Alright, back to napping then. Like literally I checked the radar and there is nothing. It was clear skies on the radar. 
This is like the Bermuda Triangle for weather, I swear. But good, I'm glad to see rain. Also a big shout out to all of you guys who have sent me tools. They are so appreciated. I am literally surrounded by tools from all of you guys that have been sending me stuff. Thank you so much, and thank you also to Michael for all of the, uh, shoot. All right, so I looked down the line of every single hole down. All of these, they're not binding whatsoever. They're all nice and loose. There's a couple other things. Um, to check if the wobble box, this is the wobble box or your gear box, to check and make sure that this is still working okay, they set online to take the knife bar off. This is the knife bar. And uh, to turn the PTO by hand and see if this bobbles. They also said that when you hold the pulley, this should not be able to move at all. So we're gonna try that too and make sure that's good. Um, a bad wobble box is, is not a good thing to have. Most people said that at the point that they start to have issues is the point that they just go. So I don't think it's a bad wobble box. I think if that were the case, it would have blown already. But um, actually, none of you guys even notice that this part right here is brand spanking new. This is a new pulley. And I can tell because the paint is so smooth on this compared to like everything else. So I would dare to guess that they might have actually rebuilt the wobble box at one point. So uh, yeah, let's pull this off and see what we get. This is where it gets fun. I might have, I think I had to grab a breaker bar last time. I might have to do that this time too. A really big breaker bar. All right, we're gonna be right back. All right, with the breaker bar, bigger is always better. And I have a big old, big old breaker bar. All right. All right, so that should be good. Swap back out. Still tight. There we go. All right, so here's another tip that I'm going to give you if you're looking at servicing your hay bind or hay mower. That's a sickle bar. All right, so this is your knife arm right here. This is your pitman arm. This is the pin, and then there's the bolt right here. I took the bolt out. Looks right here. The key with this is it absolutely must be torqued according to the specs in the manual. Now what happens is as you torque this knot and bolt, this knife arm will rise in the guards. So if this isn't torqued correctly, this is going to be sitting lower in these guards than it should be. So if you're trying to tighten stuff up and set it, you absolutely will have bad results. But I just wanted to let you know, because even just loosening this knot threw off every single guard down the line. As you can tell, I'm, I'm a small person, but this is just a little bit tighter than what I'd like. I'm going to actually rotate this out a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so that's much better. You gotta get our brush hog up and rolling. I know, it's sitting here like a sad apple, dead in the dirt. But uh, we need to go through grease set. I need to check the hyponic fluid in the reservoir and make sure it's operational. And then it's gonna hook to the TYM. And for the first time, she's gonna have her maiden voyage with the PTO. I'm really excited. There's only one thing we need to do for the TYM. They have this handy dandy little PTO cover, but it's bolted on. <laughs> so we gotta unbolt that. Isn't that interesting? I've never seen a PTO cover before. But it makes perfect sense because let's face it, that's how your PTOs get so gunky. Hmm. Oh, oh no! Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? It just went down there. Are you kidding me? 
What are the odds? Literally, it just, I pulled it off, I was gonna move the camera, and then boof. And I got like this much time. Seriously, I cannot do this right now. Wait to see how many of you guys can do that. You know, everybody thought I was not for getting an open cab tractor, but seriously, it's the only way you can actually enjoy the weather and just smell all the beautiful fresh air. Yeah, you do have the bugs in your face, but it's just so much nicer to be more connected to nature by not having the top over your head. So you can get your work done and enjoy the scenery. So this year I had a tough decision to make. We have a small two acre parcel of land that just hasn't really grown much of anything, including orchard grass. Considering how poorly our orchard grass was doing this year, I made the decision to go ahead and buy some teff grass seed. Now teff is a warm season grass, so it thrives in the summer temperatures. It likes the heat, it likes the sun, it likes the rain, it likes everything pretty much except for cold. Once it starts to have frost on the ground, the teff dies off pretty quick. So it, it's an annual here up in Michigan, but it can make some great horse hay if we grow it carefully. So since I have to wait for hay parts, I decided it's time to go out and mow this area. Now this area I had sprayed with weed killer just a little while before, so now it's time to go through and brush hog it down using the TYM. It's a great day, beautiful weather, and there's no sense pulling out a giant tractor for something like this. The TYM really shows off her colors doing a lot more of this field sort of work. called clay and depending on where you looked online it either looked grayish or it looked brownish so um this is my unstained board this is my stained board the original color was actually quite black it wasn't supposed to be that dark but that's how the pine came out here is the actual stain this stuff is actually really really nice um, it's supposed to help prevent streaks and it's an all-in-one formula so you only have to do one coat and it has no odor and it's very smooth. So I really, really recommend this stuff. It is great stuff. I found that on Amazon. There's a link in the video description if you'd like to look at purchasing that. So to get the color lighter, I mixed it with 25% of the boiled linseed oil. I'll include a link for that too. 
and together it gave a nice lightened color. I might actually bump it up to 50-50 to get an even lighter color. I had one board in the mix, ah, right there. I think it was this one right here. It was really, really light, and I seem to like that a little bit better. It's a little bit darker than what I want, but I guess that's gonna be what it is, so. And my shirt, this is my painting shirt. So I'll show you the first one. Um, I like painting this time of day because uh, you get a little bit more sun on the boards. I mean, you can see this one's got a lot more linseed oil than yesterday's batch. You can see a lot more of the browns and the reds popping through. So that's gonna match my wood inside a little bit better. It's still obviously really dark. But if I were to stain these white boards, uh, with a clear coat it's just gonna look strange i just i don't think i'm gonna like it so even though i'm not gonna like the fact that this is gonna darken my office up it's gonna look really sweet so you take what you can get i guess and at this point i'm gonna be brutally honest with you I definitely should have had Eric help me set the first line of boards on both sides of the ceiling um, because even having it off just a slight bit, it, it throws a lot of stuff off. And with the plastic on the ceiling, those boards were sliding everywhere. So even when I got it straight, by the time I was able to lift the nail gun up, that board would slide just the slightest bit. And well, in the long run scheme of things, it, it kind of adds up. And actually what I'm putting up right now, I end up going back through later on and ripping out entirely because, well, the first board, I missed a stud on the end and I couldn't get it out without taking out the other boards too. So <sighs> it's a long, arduous process of nailing boards up, realizing it's not quite catching a stud and pulling it back down. By the time I had the first half of the ceiling done, I pretty much knew what the dimensions were between each of the set studs. Oh wow. <laughs> that's gonna be really rustic looking. That's crazy. Ideally, you should just run a whole line down, I think, and then just kind of stagger it going through. <sighs> Otherwise, you might run into an issue where it's gonna be too tight to get it in. From. You get a little bit of rain and all the weeds suddenly sprout. What? Another one? Am I growing a green cabin over here? Oh, actually, it doesn't feel too bad in here. But oh, well. Um. Hmm. Yeah, sorry there, buddy, but uh, you can't live here. This place has already been taken. Uh, that was a little tight. Uh, ah! Keep me from shutting my fingers in the window when I open it. How does that happen? Ah! Ah! Okay, I just walked through the spider web. <laughs> Whoa! Why did you have to pick this area? Okay. This has gotta be definitely the worst bug I've found in here so far. Blech. 
I'm not like petrified of spiders, but you know, big ugly spiders falling on my head is kind of a different story. It's like, I'm not afraid of snakes, but if one falls out of a tree and lands on my head, I'm probably gonna scream pretty good. last row to go a little more involved than I thought so you know I really thought that I would have had this part done like days ago but nope just picking at it all right so I'm gonna let you in on a little secret most YouTube farmers do not like doing repair work videos because they are so tedious, not only to shoot the film for, but also to edit. And I spent probably, I'm not joking, two hours or more trying to get that pin out of the sickle bar cutter. Now, the curious thing is, that pin is supposed to slide out like butter and slide back in like butter. If it's not, that right there is something you really need to take a hard look at because that could potentially be why you are breaking sickle bars. Yeah, you can expect to spend probably an hour just trying to get this dumb thing out. We'll be right back. All right, so we finally got it free. And by we, I mean it took two people to get that pin out. Now, normally these things are not that hard to get out. You loosen the bolt, which, it's right here, it fell over here. You loosen the bolt and, oh, oh, looky here. Something to notice, look at this bolt. See all that on there? It's got some grooves worn in there, which I was actually reading about. I actually just read about that online. 
Well, the groove's worn into the bolt on there. Yeah, so I think we're definitely going to need to get a new pitman arm. Um, I'm not sure what grade this is. This is supposed to actually shear off. And uh, so what people were doing is they were going with grade 8. And when they went with grade 8, then the actual sickle bar would snap. Um, and so what the theory was, I believe, you can actually see it looks like it's slightly bowed. If the sickle knives were catching anywhere on any of the guards down the line, it would actually cause excessive wear on this, which would cause it to essentially snap. So this is designed to snap before the sickle bar. Unfortunately, it's never snapped for us. We've never replaced this, but um, I will go down to John Deere and get a new one um, just to be sure. But I'm glad I picked this up because I didn't realize it had wear patterns like that. And some of this looks fairly fresh, I think, but it's hard to tell. So anyway, there's that. This looks perfectly fine. I have no idea why this was stuck in there. Um, I will get a new one just to be sure. It looks like it's in great shape other than my beatings. This is for me and Eric working on it. Um, so what we had to do, get my rag. We had to drive a wedge into the pinch right there, pry it open and then take a screwdriver not this one, this one is too big. And you basically wedge it right up in there and then you hit the end of this with a hammer and just pop it upward like so. And that took probably a good half an hour of both of us beating on it before it finally came loose. So the other last thing we noticed was the Pittman arm it has a little groove all the way around there. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Um, yeah, you can kind of see it's like a ledge. I don't know if it's supposed to have that or not. You know, when you look at pictures online, it's hard to see something like that. Um, I have heard that the pin, if it wiggles around, can oblong the hole. Um, but honestly, it seemed pretty tight. It does maybe seem like it's got a little bit of wear, but it's kind of hard to tell in the shadows with the lights and such. <laughs> Now, I think at least one of you guys last year pointed out that I could turn something inside that would allow me to rotate the machine without having to rotate the PTO and itself. Believe me, this saves me a lot of busted knuckles. <laughs> but one thing I'm finding is that it's getting stuck when I try to rotate it. So, this is a good thing because now I can look at other aspects of the machine itself in other words, the rollers, the conditioners, and make sure that they're in a proper alignment as well, because if they're not correctly aligned, it's gonna be really hard to rotate this by hand. So that's my next objective. Here, this seems to be really tight. So I think I need to space these out just a hair bit. So conclusion is that I think the rollers are just a hair bit too tight. Uh, this is the area, this is the, if you're standing at the back of the machine, this is the left side. Uh, we've got some instructions up here. Um, both of these are really great for trying to figure this whole area out because this is not in the manual. All right, so this is the one we're looking at. It's talking about adjusting the rollers. So we've got the left side adjustment and the right side adjustment. So if we look at right here, right here, so you can see it's set right in the center. Okay, and you can see we've got about an inch of bolt sticking out the side here. So if we travel around to the other side of the machine, it gets a little different. All right, so right here is our area and he's way the crap back there. I don't even know how far back he is because I can't even see him, but he looks like he's right about on the very edge. Actually, he's on the very end of that. So he is not set correctly to the other side. Um, I have the parts that I need on order. Unfortunately, John Deere doesn't carry them, so it's gonna be a week before they can get them.